Uh, hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to talk about Parallel Library and we are going to briefly compare it with uh, the thread class that we previously covered uh, when talking about multi-threading. So uh, in order to do that uh, I have created this example that uh, contains, uh, I'll just show it, it contains this vector, uh, it's a vector of numbers and that vector is uh, and uh, contains 100,000 1, elements and all of these elements are uh, randomly initialized. Uh, what we want to know is how many of those 100,000 elements are prime numbers. Okay, and that, that's why we have this is prime uh, function that return uh, for each number if it's prime number or not. Uh, first we have a single threaded approach. So when I click this, uh, what I simply do I check all uh, vector elements starting from the first one to the last one and if the current vector element is prime then simply increase the prime counter by one and uh, input and add this uh, information about how many prime numbers were found and what was the time required to find it uh, inside the list box. So let's see. So when I click here so uh, he needed approximately 0 0.8 seconds to find uh, 10,830 prime numbers inside uh, the vector of 100,000 uh, elements. So let's see how much time will he need when we use uh, multi-threading. In this case we are not going to use just one thread but we are going to use two threads and that means that each thread will search its part of the vector. So first thread will search the first part and the second uh, thread will uh, search the second part of the vector. In order to use that uh, we have created the uh, prime search thread uh, class that is pretty much nothing but the thread. It uh, has a reference to the vector that we are going to check and uh, we have start and end. Start and end uh, defined where the current uh, thread ser starts searching and where it ends searching. So which is the starting element, which is the ending element and this will contain the number of uh, prime numbers found in that uh, section of the vector. And this is the code inside this uh, search thread execute. So pretty much like I said, it just searches his own part of the vector. And uh, now let's see, if I have two, so meaning uh, I have two threads uh, searching, uh, each searching his own part of the vector, well, it's pretty much expected double less the time. And now if we have four, again, double less the time, we have eight. So this is the 60 core and 32 thread CPU. So we'll see how much, uh, how fast he can go. This is going to be 16 and for some reason 16 threads was not much faster than 8 uh, threads. Now let's see 32. Uh, it needed 55 milliseconds. So if we compare uh, how much time was needed when using only one thread and uh, 32 threads, we can see that in this case uh, using all 32 threads was uh, 16 times faster. Okay, 16 times faster and that's that's actually a great re result. Okay, uh, so uh, what was the code uh, used for this? Okay, this is the code, as, as I already mentioned, we needed to create this prime search class and we already showed what it contains uh, and also this code was needed uh, to, uh, to create those threads and start checking uh, their elements, start checking uh, the vector elements. So this code, as you can see, is, is a quite large code and what it does, it makes sure that uh, each uh, prime thread, each prime search thread uh, checks the same vector and uh, checks its own uh, part of the vector. So I, I'll let you uh, to examine this part of your code yourself, but uh, it's pretty ugly, as you can see, it's a large amount of code and what uh, we are going to uh, now show is how to do it uh, much faster, much efficiently by using Parallel Library. But first we are going to uh, show how to use Parallel 4. And as you can see, this is the only code required 
to do the same thing uh, as we just did with the track class. This is the entire code needed to do the same thing with using parallel for. Now let's see. So if we have 32 threads with T thread, it uh, specifies here 55 milliseconds and parallel for uh, pretty much the same time. Okay, even faster in some cases, but uh, uh, it found the same number of prime uh, numbers in the vector, meaning uh, it found correct number, and uh, the time required to do it is pretty much the same, but uh, look at the complexity. So this was the code using tthread, plus the uh, class itself and the implementation of the execute method, while uh, parallel library, meaning parallel 4, only required this code. And what it does, it says parallel 4, I check uh, from 1 to uh, number size, meaning each of the numbers in the vector, and the numbers vector, will be checked by using this function. And that function will be uh, executed in a separate thread. So, uh, and uh, what it does, it simply checks if the current uh, element of the vector is a prime number, and if it is, uh, increase the uh, total prime count by one. Okay, and that's that's all it's uh, necessary. And like I said, just compare the complexity of the code and the size of the code, and this is much easier to use. Uh, what I want to mention also that uh, parallel library by default will uh, use all existing uh, CPU cores and threads uh, on your computer, meaning uh, it will not, like in this case, we have specified how many threads do we, do we want and we manually created all those threads here, but uh, that is not necessary, but when working with parallel library, it will uh, manually, uh, it will actually automatically find out how many uh, cores and CPU threads do you have, uh, it will also monitor your uh, memory and it will decide uh, automatically uh, how, uh, how many threads will it create and how uh, will they be executed one by one. So uh, it's all automatic, okay, uh, so, and that's what's great about it. Um, so let's run it. I have, okay, let's start again, tthread 57 parallel 4. 54 and now let's uh, see another thing that is the parallel task so parallel task uh, will also uh, do things parallelly but uh, the difference between a four parallel four and parallel task parallel four will create more threads uh, it's more efficiently but it requires much more resources while task is a unit of work that needs to be done and uh, the task can reuse uh, existing uh, threads, so it doesn't need to recreate them, it doesn't need to use additional resources, and I actually prefer to use task. But uh, what you have here is that task uh, uh, used much more time uh, in, in comparison to parallel 4. So why was that? Well, if I click here parallel task, as you can see this uh, progress bar is filling out, and that's what uh, took most of the time, because in this case uh, I did not just uh, demonstrate how to use task, but also we have used the synchronization inside the thread. So we have synchronized the progress bar position. Uh, if I uh, comment this part here, so what actually happened, I'll just comment code a little bit, we have created uh, new uh, Delphi interface tasks. We don't need to use delete as this is Delphi interface. Uh, and uh, we have created each task and each task uh, does the same thing. It, uh, check, it checks if the current number is the prime number and it increases the total prime count by one. And uh, the problem is that tasks, uh, after they start, uh, your application will not stop in this line. Uh, it will not wait, your application will not wait until tasks are done. You need to wait manually. So in this case, I'm simply saying while, uh, wait for all. Task, wait for all. I'm waiting for all tasks to end and for 
uh, while I'm waiting each 100 milliseconds to do this application process messages. And that will make sure that my uh, progress bar is uh, updated inside the GUI. So uh, when I uh, run again, parallel 4, parallel task. So as you can see, it's a big difference, but now we'll see what will, difference, uh, what will be the difference when I comment this code. So I will not be updating GUI, uh, but I will just wait until all tasks are finished. So parallel 4, parallel task. Okay, as you can see, uh, in previous case it was almost 2 seconds, now it's only 233 milliseconds. It's still uh, slower than when using Parallel 4, but like I said, uh, uh, it, uh, tasks are using a uh, lot less memory and a lot less uh, resources than, than uh, uh, threads with Parallel 4. Maybe it's uh, simply a matter of choice, you decide. So, personally, I use uh, parallel tasks, but like I said, it's not wrong to use parallel 4. Okay, so as you, uh, now you saw, you can use parallel 4, which is easy and simple. You saw now how to use uh, parallel task. Okay, we have created a task here. And uh, we also showed how to synchronize inside a task. Okay, and how to wait for a task to end. Uh, you can also synchronize inside the uh, Parallel 4 as well. Uh, what Parallel Library also contains is the uh, future objects. So, we have a task future. Uh, task, you can imagine it as a procedure. Uh, so, it does some code and it doesn't return any value, while uh, future is nothing but a task that has a return value. So. Uh, let's say uh, we have a, a future here that does nothing but waits for 10 seconds and it then returns done. Why uh, it returns a string? Because we have specified here that that is a future that returns string. Uh, you need to declare this object. In this case it's a future object somewhere globally. Uh, I think I have put it here. Okay, this is the required line that uh, declares that future uh, object and what happens is once you initialize this object so in this very moment uh, the future will be start to execute and it will execute in the background okay and now let's see what happens I click future create so it's now executing in the background and notice that this application is responsive so you can move it you can do whatever you want and uh, like I said, future is nothing but a task with a return value. So when I click here, read or return, uh, uh, read return value, it will read done. Why? Because that future object uh, object returned done. Okay. But watch this. When I click create, and now uh, and I click now return, uh, the application is frozen, and it will be frozen until this future is done executing and uh, that is what future does so future uh, will uh, do some work in the background uh, when you have and you can have the uh, application uh, responsive but if you try to read the return value of the future before the future is done it will freeze the application until it's finished so now it freezes the application until uh, it's finished and until it returns that value that you asked for. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, what you can do here. But like I said, just compare uh, the implementation complexity, the code side, co code size when using Tthread and uh, when using Parallel Library. I believe that it is much easier to uh, work with uh, Parallel Library. Well, uh, thank you for watching, and see you next time.